Okay, so this example is built around a classical experiment used to define the uh, static coefficient of friction between two surfaces. In particular, what we have here is an arm CA, which is rotating in a vertical plane at a constant rate of omega. And we're told that when CA is horizontal, particle P, having a mass of little m, is stationary with respect to the arm. And we're further told that as P starts to slip at some later angle theta slip, and based on this, we're asked to see if we can determine, by measuring theta slip, the static value of coefficient of friction between P and the arm. So the way I'm going to do this is I'll draw a free by diagram for the particle, and I know I'm going to need here some uh, coordinates to help me out, so I'm going to choose to use polar coordinates here. So I'll define my E sub R unit vector to be outward like so, and E sub theta to be perpendicular to that in this direction. And in this case, I know it's going to slip towards point C, so I'm going to have a friction force acting out something here like so. And I'll have a normal force acting perpendicular to the arm. And of course, I'll have a weight force acting down, where the angle between weight and n will be given here by the angle theta. In terms of mass times acceleration, I know I'm going to have an m times a sub r acting radially outward, which will be equal to m times r double dot minus r times theta dot quantity squared. And in the a sub r, excuse me, a sub theta direction, I'll have m a sub theta is equal to m times quantity 2 r dot theta dot plus r times theta double dot. So I'm going to start this problem. I can go ahead and sum forces in the radial direction. And if I do that, I'll set this equal to m in the a sub r. And this is going to give me that f minus mg times the sine of the angle theta is equal to m times quantity r double dot minus r times theta dot squared. And let's call that equation 1. I can then sum forces in the theta direction. So if I do that, I know that's going to equal m times a theta. And this is going to give me that n minus mg times the cosine of the angle theta is equal to m times quantity 2 r dot theta dot plus r times theta double dot. Let's call that equation 2. We also know that due to the nature of the friction force that f is going to equal the static coefficient of friction mu s times the normal force n. Let's call that equation 3. Now at this juncture, I want to solve for essentially the value from us. And so to do that, I'm going to go ahead now and start to apply my kinematics. So I know that at the instant where the slipping is not occurring, that r double dot and r dot will be 0. I also know that the arm is rotating at a constant rate of omega, which means that theta dot will go to omega, and theta double dot will go to 0. Based on this, I can take equation 2 and solve for the normal force, because I know the normal force is simply going to equal, in this case, mg times the cosine of theta. If I plug that into the result from equation 3, I'm going to get that the friction force is equal to mu s times mg times the cosine of the angle theta. And if I plug that into equation 1, I'm going to get that mu s times mg times the cosine of the angle theta minus mg times the sine of the angle theta is going to equal minus m times r times omega squared. I can note in this expression that mass will cancel out from each term. And so what I'll be left with here is a relationship for which I can solve for mu s. Namely, I'll have mu s times g times the cosine of the theta critical value minus g times the sine of the theta critical value is equal to minus r omega squared. You can plug in numerical values here for everything that you know, and what you'll be left with is a simple numerical result for mu s. This is a great simple experiment that one can perform to determine the static coefficient of friction. I hope before you leave your university you have a chance to do it yourself. Best of luck, everyone.